Catholicism equals Christianity versus the truth of the word of God. Now, for a thousand years, the Roman Catholic Church was the principal church of Christendom. So it comes as no surprise that Catholicism is directly responsible for the so-called Christian holiday observances practiced by the majority of Christians nowadays. The ecumenical councils of the emperor, pope, archbishops, and cardinals from the year 325 AD through modern day have defined and greatly influenced Christianity as it is practiced today. The first council in 50 AD was of true apostolic nature and calling. The Council of Nicaea, 325 AD, was the council that determined when Easter should be observed. Succeeding councils continued to shape and form Christianity, the end result being the many practices observed today. Now currently, the entire Christian religion is practicing what the Roman Catholic Church decreed as 40 days of Lent leading up to the miscalculated Good Friday. Subsequently, Following Good Friday, the crescendo of these religious practices will end with Easter Sunday, one of the so-called holiest days of the liturgical year for Christians. Easter stands second to the widely acclaimed Christmas Day, both of which were decreed as holy days by the Roman Catholic Church at the convening of the ecumenical councils from 325 A.D. onward. In this series, certain definitions are required in order to comprehend the system of man Versus the truth of God or Elohim. You'll find that in Romans chapter 1 verse 1. Romans chapter 15 verse 8. Now these are the categories that we'll look at. Catholicism. Christianity. Councils. 40 days of Lent. Good Friday. And Easter Sunday. The comparison will be to show how Catholicism is contrary to the truth of God or Elohim. And that each category is not found in the scriptures, making its source of some other origin. The only word of the categories that we're looking at that is found in the Bible is the word counsel. All other words along with their concepts that define Christianity and that is strictly adhered to by Christians is nowhere to be found in the Bible. Now, the Bible is a book of words of which Elohim declares that words are one of the essential methods and means in which he unveils his will. You'll find that in Exodus chapter 4, verse 28, verse 30, chapter 19, verse 6 and 7, chapter 20, verse 1, chapter 24, verse 3, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 10, chapter 5, verse 22, chapter 12, verse 28, Psalm chapter 12, verse 6, chapter 119, verse 89, verse 103, verse 130, Matthew 24, 35, Mark chapter 8, verse 38, chapter 10, verse 24, John chapter 1, verse 1, chapter 3, verse 34, Acts chapter 5, verse 20, chapter 7, verse 22, 2 Corinthians 12 and 4, 2 Timothy 1 and 13, 2 and 14, 2 Peter 3 and 2, Jude Jude 17, Revelation 17 and 17, chapter 21 and verse 5, chapter 22, verses 18 and 19. Now, these chapters and verses represent a small portion of the importance of the word of God, literally his words. Words are significant and the use of words are either spirit led or fleshly led. Since Catholicism, Christianity, Lent, Good Friday and Easter Sunday are words not found in the Bible. It stands to reason without any sense of revelation that these words are inspired, led, initiated, and sanctioned by the fleshly mind of man. Catholicism means universal, universalism, even eclectic, an amalgamation of beliefs not biblically based. Actually, eclecticism is absolutely contrary to all biblical doctrine. Subsequently, Christianity, Lent, Good Friday, and Easter Sunday are the children of Catholicism, a religion that employs countless practices that are anti-biblical. Two prominent examples of Catholic practices are contrary to sound doctrine found in the Bible. Number one, statues are a blatant violation of the words in the Bible. 
You'll find that in Exodus chapter 20, verse 4, chapter 23, verse 24, chapter 34, verse 13, Leviticus 26 and 1, 26 and 30, Numbers 33 and 52, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 16, 23, 25, chapter 5, verse 8, chapter 7, verse 5, chapter 12, verse 3, chapter 16, verse 22, chapter 27, verse 15, Psalm 78, 58, chapter 97, verse 7, Acts 19, 35, Romans 1, 23, 1 Corinthians 8, 4, 10, 10, 14, 19, chapter 12, verse 2, chapter 6, verse 16, 1 Thessalonians 1 and 9, 1 John 5 and 21, Revelation 9, 20, and chapter 22 and verse 15, which speaks about idols, which is akin to statues. Number two, the Pope, cardinals, bishops, and priests, and no man is worthy of worship or praise or to be called father. You'll find that in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, 45, 48, chapter 6, verse 4, 9 and 14, chapter and verse 32, chapter 7, verse 11, chapter 21, I mean, verse 21, chapter 10, verse 32, verse 33, chapter 23, and verse 9, especially the gospel of John chapter 14 and 8, 14 and 10, 11 and 12, Galatians chapter 1, verse 1, 3 and 4, Ephesians chapter 2 and 18, 1 John 1 and 3, 1 John 2 and 1, and Revelation 1 and 6 and chapter 14 and 1. Now, Christianity essentially means the way of Christ, but actually is the amalgamation of the religious practices introduced by the Roman Emperor Constantine, the so-called great. The problem with the word Christianity is that it is nowhere in the Bible, absolutely nowhere. We have already established that words are significant and the meaning of words matter in relation to intelligent communication. Christian. Where is the word Christian found in the Bible? Well, you'll find it in Acts chapter 11, verse 26, chapter 26, verse 28, and 1 Peter 4 and 16. Now, let's look at each one of these. Acts chapter 11, verse 26 establishes the precedence of the use of the word Christian because it clearly says, and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. The very structure of the verse reveals the calling of Christians was something not subscribed by the disciples themselves but by another source or an inference of belittling the followers of Christ. Acts chapter 26 verse 28 is the record of a Gentile King Agrippa identifying the Apostle Paul as a Christian, a name that had become associated with the followers of Christ. First Peter 4 and 16 uses the word Christian to identify the followers of Christ as the persecutors saw the followers of Christ. The Apostle Peter is not sanctioning the word, nor is he speaking of a revelatory use and identification of the word. Other than this one account in 1 Peter 4.16, no other apostle ever used the word Christian. Christian and Christianity is clearly Catholicism in its truest form. Now, this study is what Christians are currently observing in the form of 40 days of Lent into the inaccurate Good Friday observance, culminating in the false observance of Easter Sunday events. The use of words are necessary to communicate instruction, information, direction, assist with understanding, impart knowledge, and introduce the will and the word of God. The caveat in the Holy Scripture is that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of Elohim. Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. This is TJD in 4D. Shalom.